the shooting range. In this episode, we look a little bit closer at the French tech tree, the amazing Vautour and the French national pride. Hotline, the developers answer questions that you've left in the comments. But first, let's start with how to fly the D-371. The French aviation brought us a new type of aircraft, a parasol wing monoplane. Of course, they're for the lower ranks. But you can surprise your enemies a lot when you fly a reserve plane armed with cannons. You heard it right. The D-371 HS9 is armed with a couple of 20mm cannons that can tear apart those biplanes and any monoplane fighters like they're made of paper. Then add a very good maneuverability and durability and you get a machine that's quite dangerous in close combat. Of course, there are some disadvantages too. You can carry only 60 bullets and the recoil is huge. So there's no point in long bursts at all. So what you need is a stealth ammo belt, 500 meters convergence and a good eye. Get on your enemy six, take your aim, give a short burst, and admire the result. You also need to remember a few other things. Don't chase the bombers. Oddly enough, they're far less protected from the machine guns than from your cannons, so save your ammo for enemy fighters. The D-371 is very good at low velocity, but it won't break if you decide to boom and zoom. So the tactics are up to you. Don't attack the enemy in front. You'll lose before you know it. You can't achieve good fire density. So any enemy will have a lot of chances to ground you while you're battling with your own guns. If you want to farm points for your French tech tree without leaving the playpen, this plane is your best option to start. A new nation in the game means a lot of new content. New matchmaking, beautiful models and all that. But how are the Croissant Born actually different from the other air forces in War Thunder? Let's figure it out. Of course, you have all heard about the problems of the French war machine during the war and how it quickly got under German control. But even before the Second World War, France got to build a lot of pretty decent aircraft. They are mostly the ones to represent this nation on tiers from 1 to 3. In almost all of them, the gameplay is something like on British and American planes combined. Guns and cannons, medium velocities, not much at maneuvers. No, oh, by the way, we didn't mention the Americans just like that. Almost half of the strike aircraft on ranks 3 and 4 in the French tree are actually the Americans. Also, those who will get to the VB-10 will see that somehow it's very similar to the Thunderbolt. But probably the best one there is the MB-157 a quintessence of firepower and performance in an elegant design. But all the fun is of course hidden in the top machines, especially in their armament. Yes, the fighters are probably not better than their Soviet and US colleagues, but the firepower of the French strike aircraft is simply marvelous. High explosive missiles piercing 300 and 450 millimeters of armor and you can fire them in dozens. Even after they've been recently nerfed, you can still quite effectively destroy a lot of ground tech. And if the missiles are not enough, add 750 pound bombs to the bundle to be sure no one gets out without damage. So you'll probably want to farm the bombers in the first place and get to the Vautour. This one is just amazing. And since 
We like the Votour so much. Let's talk about it a bit more. The concept of a multi-purpose, two-engine aircraft was very popular even during the piston engines era. Every country that was considered as a leader in aviation of that time created at least one of those. But the World War II air battles proved that those planes, for all occasions, were no match for one-engine fighter bombers. So, almost all of the two-engine planes were repurposed as bombers, strike aircraft or nighttime fighters. They got a second chance with the invention of jet engines. All over the world they decided, uh, well, with the new turbines, the two-engine planes would definitely outshine any one-engine competitor. So, France demanded such aircraft to be created immediately. What with the news of USA, USSR and Britain doing exactly the same thing. The engineers of the Sudost company got so enthusiastic with the task that they created not one, but three prototypes of the new aircraft. And the first of those got into the air as early as the beginning of 1953. It was called the Vautour 2A, a heavy fighter with four 30mm cannons that for the time had an impossible amount of combined firepower. The second prototype, the Vautour 2B, was created as a bomber with a glazed nose and a seat for the bombardier. It didn't have any forward-facing armament, but a bicycle layout of the landing gear enabled this relatively small plane to have a huge bomb hatch and carry up to four tons of explosive gifts for the enemies of the Republic. This aircraft could also carry a ridiculously big amount of unguided missiles on the underwing pylons. Hell, you could even load a nuclear bomb on it. As for the third prototype, the Vautour 2N, it was created as a nighttime fighter with powerful guns and a very good radar system. The Vautours were very good in all ways except for the engines. The first prototypes were flying on the British Rolls-Royce Avon turbojet engines that were the best in their class for the time. But the engine is the heart of the plane and the one who builds it takes the credit for the whole thing. And the French national pride couldn't allow a French plane to fly a British engine. Of course, the SNECMA engine manufacturer offered its own variant which was a distant descendant of the German BMW 018. But it was bigger, heavier, had a lot less jet force and consumed a lot more fuel than the British competitor. But the French Air Ministry decided that they'd better have a poorer engine, which was their own. Rolls-Royce engine builders tried and failed to sell and even to gift the license for the Avon technology to the SNECMA. And the Americans tried, and also failed to remind the French that they were all part of the NATO, a strategic alliance. France wanted this one to be its own. As a result, the Vautour lost in flexibility. They even had to stop working in the nighttime version. Because who needs a high-speed interceptor if its weak turbines take half an hour to speed up to a transonic speed? And then, the pilot finds out that he's no fuel even to return home. But as a daytime frontline fighter and strike aircraft, the Vautour wasn't bad at all. The French never got to use it, but it was a great help to Israel during the Six-Day War and the War of Attrition. The Vautour didn't get a big production line because of its own problems and a heavy competition from the Americans. By 1980, there were no aircraft of this type in service. Still, the French aviation, especially its engine-building branch, took a lot from those planes. After a while, France started producing its own amazing turbojet engines and hypersonic bombers. Weak men use failure as an excuse to give up. Strong ones use it as a lesson to get better. 
Get ready for the traditional last part of our show, Hotline. Developers answering questions from the comments. The first question comes from John Fox. Since we have the BMP1 and the Big Light Panzer 57, are we going to see more IFVs and Scout support vehicles? Hey there. Yes, we're going to add more of those. Wait for the good news on our site. A player called Mighty Peppers Gaming Channel writes, Hey mates, I noticed the lone attack heli in the hangar. Is this a teaser? Hi mate, the helicopter in the hangar is a nod to the events that happened in the game on the 1st of April, when people were able to fly the helicopters in air battles. Then there is this question for the workers from Asriel. Isn't it boring to read all the messages? Well, Asriel, it's not actually. We get a lot of ideas from them. By the way, if your question isn't answered, there's a good chance that the developers still received your request for a new tech or something like that. Because we consult with them a lot while doing the show. Also, this is our chance to remind you that this section of the show isn't very serious. And if you have a question concerning core game mechanics or bugs or some specific details, you'll get more luck getting your answer on the official War Thunder forums. And the last question comes from Military Boss. If you do read them all, oh, come on, please read. Where do you get the clips for this show? If you mean the historical footage, there's a lot of that in open sources. And if you mean the in-game footage, dude like we film it ourselves. Well, that's it for today, but feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on The Shooting Range.